America, the orthopedic clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit orthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience and knowledge from the pros. Russell to excel at building supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience and from the pros. Russell to excel at building supply. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. Not a cloud in the sky for today's matchup, a doubleheader between the visiting Bessemer Academy Rebels and your Lee Scott Warriors. As we are moments away from first pitch here at John Meals Field, we welcome you into the Russell Building Supply countdown to first pitch. There might not be a cloud in the sky, the wind, Definitely picking up here and there as we it's picking up a little bit. We'll apologize. Try and keep that to a minimal throughout the afternoon. Well, as we mentioned, the Warriors are red hot in just about every aspect of the game right now. Lee Scott is six and zero in their last six games and are outscoring opponents fifty one to six in those six games. We'll split those into four different categories. And we'll start with the offense. Again, this is a Lee Scott team that you see quiet at the plate at times. But again, over these past couple games, have really picked up the confidence at the plate. The lineup construction seems to be working to a T and something that we've been emphasizing the entire year. Timely hitting and an emphasis on two out runs and being able to score crooked numbers. The last time we were out here, Lee Scott had four crooked numbers. And baseball t- statistics will show you that if you can get two or three of those Again, crooked numbers being obviously anything other than zero or one. You really like your chances to win the ball game on defense. Coach Cook last time out praised the defense, stating that Lee Scott has a very plus defense, and that's something that we've talked about the entire year: the ability for the defense to make difficult plays look relatively easy, and for them to not give other offenses four outs in an inning. On the mound is where we've seen just absolute dominance. Tempo and strike one have been the two things that we've noticed so far, or at least in this hot streak. The ability to get the ball, get right back on the rubber, get your sign, and you're firing to the catcher. Being able to get strike one. Strike one is the best pitch in baseball. You get batters behind in the count, it opens up all sorts of pitches and all sorts of sequences that you can go to. And then base running and small ball. Again, that's kind of the special teams. It's comparable to special teams, at least on the football side of things. Not necessarily the sexiest way to win any baseball games. And it can definitely be overlooked on the diamond. But, you know, think about football. If it's a 14 to 10 ball game and a punter shanks one off the side of his foot, it immediately gives momentum to that offense. It gives them the short field and that that momentum boost to go down there and take the lead. Bunting, stealing, taking the extra base, all of these are those little things that work in that special team factor that can either build the momentum or slowly take it from the opponent. We'll be back in two minutes as we are just moments away from first pitch here at John Mills Field. We'll get you starting lineups right after the anthem and the prayer. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. 
Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Doors needs federal credit union. All thrown in that we love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Experience is from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Now, the starting lineups brought to you by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price on your LSA sports station, Tiger Country 1045. We are just moments away here from first pitch at John Meals Field between the visiting Bessemer Academy Rebels and your Lee Scott Warriors. Let's dive into these starting lineups, starting with the visiting Rebels. It'll be Carmichael, Evans, and Poppy, one, two, three. Hoppin' Johns, Reynolds, and Lacey round up the middle, four, five, and six. It'll be Asher, Evans, Kaysen Munoz, and Hudson Smith rounding out seven, eight, and nine. It'll be Alex Reynolds that gets the start on the mound for the Rebels and for the Warriors. It'll be Garrett West, Ethan Hardy, Sam Jackson, J.D. Burns, Jake Cummings, Pelzer Reeves, and then Lane Eddins, Allen Owen, and Braden Butler running out the defense for the Warriors. Starting in left, it'll be Owen, Gregory, and Burns. And then around the diamond, Butler, Hardy, Reeves, and Jackson. Late Eddins will be calling the pitches. And Garrett West. No, I'm sorry. They made a change on us. It is Braden Butler that gets the start 
for the Warriors this afternoon. I think that might have been a little bit of a change because we did get confirmation during the break that it is just one game this afternoon. It is not it is not the doubleheader that we were initially thinking. So it is just the one game. And as the Warriors are taking the field for the first time this afternoon, I'll make sure that we get everything as correct as possible with those starting lineups. But it is Braden Butler that will be on the mound for the Warriors. And that might be the one change of the afternoon. Bo King gets the start at third base this afternoon. We'll confirm these lineups as well. As again, the one that, that I had taken about half an hour ago was when the doubleheader was still in check. But I believe it is confirmed to just be the one game this afternoon as, as varsity, JV, and middle school, I believe, are all set to make a game this afternoon. The first pitch to Jackson Carmichael. Misses off the plate, and we are underway. Butler delivers a strike on the inner half to even up the count. The first inning of today's broadcast is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Warrior Baseball. Butler goes to the curveball, stays arm side, misses. Brings the count to two and one. Ball chopped right back to Brandon Butler. He'll make the play on the diamond. Flip over to Sam Jackson at first. And Carmichael is retired. Warriors in their home whites with the pinstripes. Again, these are the jerseys that we talk about. Quite often on this broadcast, the big LSA across the chest, the stirrups, and the Navy hats look really sharp. First pitch swinging is Elijah Evans. It's off the end of the bat. Goes foul down by the first base dugout. Bessemer Rebels in their road grays. Not quite charcoal. With Rebels across the chest, red numbers on the back. Curveball from Braden Butler in there for a call. Strike a front door curveball, and he gets way ahead of Elijah Evans. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. The 0-2 is a fastball that misses upstairs. Whether you're tuned in on Tiger Country 104.5, the Tiger Country 104.5 app, the Facebook or the YouTube live stream, however you're tuned in, we appreciate it. And for your support of Lee Scott Academy Baseball, a two or one two, I apologize, is a curveball. Tries to go back to it. But instead will catch just a piece of Elijah Evans. So he will make his way down to first for the first base runner of the afternoon. Again, we apologize about the wind, a heavy wind. Again, not necessarily constant here behind the plate, but when it comes, it goes in gusts. First pitch misses in the Right-handed batter's box. Wind blowing about 10 to 4 on the clock from about the 345 in left center to the first base dugout. The flag to our right would agree with that. So any ball Hit to left field or even left center. You're going to see tail back towards the middle of the field. And it does look like Allen Owen and left is shaded a few steps closer to the infield. Of probably playing for that win, knowing that everything's going to get caught up in there. The 1 0 misses outside, brings the count to two balls and no strikes to Trent Poppy, the center fielder. Batting from the left side. The runner is off and running. As that ball is ripped foul down the right field line. So Evans will trot his way back to first on the foul ball. A 
A long pause. The 2 1 is in on the hands, lifted into shallow right center field. Easton Gregory making a running catch. Fires over to first, but not in time to get Evans. Evans got a little bit bigger of a secondary. So he wasn't sure if that ball was going to hang up or if it was going to drop. But good closing speed from the center fielder. And that retires his counterpart. His poppy's retired on the soft fly ball. One on, two out here in the top half of the first inning between the visiting Bessemer Rebels and your Lee Scout Warriors. Curve ball from Braden Butler in there for a called strike. Runners off and running. Butler steps off and throws over to second, and it's going to be in time. Great communication there from the middle infield tech telling Braden Butler to step off the diamond as Elijah Evans tried to get greedy and left just a step or two early. And so the pickoff, nothing doing for the Rebels in the top half. We head to the home half. It'll be Garrett West, Ethan Hardy, and Sam Jackson when we return on the Lee Scott Sports Network. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. A dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with with local attention. It's Lee Scott baseball game time. The first inning is brought to you by Auburn Bank on Tiger Country 104.5. Nothing doing for the Rebels in the top half of the first inning. We head to the home half. Warriors looking to scratch that first tally on the scoreboard. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Happy opening day to all of those who celebrate. As I believe there's 13 MLB games this afternoon. I think the first one's about to, first pitch I think was scheduled for 210, so just about ready for action here. It's going to be Ethan Hardy that leads things off for the Warriors. First pitch swinging fouls one straight back off the netting. Alex Reynolds, tall right-handed arm, gets the start for the Rebels on the mound. The you know, one's a fastball, misses up and away. Reynolds showing the velocity early. Almost a, a slingshot release, goes way from behind the arm. Try and keep hitters from picking up on it. Goes to the curveball. Home plate umpire says it misses upstairs. So Hardy ahead of the count. Two balls and one strike. Goes to it again and gets the called strike on the inner half to even the count at two apiece. 0-0 zero, zero your score here. In the home half of the first inning between the Bessemer Rebels and the Lee Sky Warriors. Reynolds goes to the fastball on the outer half. Hardy, good job to stay alive. We'll do it again. Third baseman, even with the third base bag, rest of the infield, just about regular depth. Reynolds goes to the fastball way upstairs, and Hardy is unable to lay off. So Alex Reynolds picks up his first strikeout of the afternoon. Again, the velocity you can see, again, it's a whip, a slingshot action almost 
coming off the the hand of that tall, lengthy right-hander. See what the Warriors decide to do with it. As Garrett West steps in, watches the first pitch curveball. Stay upstairs. The first one to Hardy was questionable. Up, I think that one definitely was upstairs, but Bessemer already letting the home plate umpire hear about it. 1-0 misses downstairs. Looked like he went to another off-speed. But West laid off. Two balls, no strikes. To number 19. He gets that 2-0 curveball just to get me over strike. But again, you're not hunting for it 2-0. So West lays off. And the count moves to 2-1. 2-1 fouled. Off the mitt of Smith behind the plate. Evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Look in the windup from Reynolds to Garrett West. It's fouled off the back down by the softball field. He went to that high fastball. Pitch before, let's see if he tries to snap off that breaking ball again. And he doesn't. He goes with the fastball. West chops it over to Carmichael at second. He'll fly over to Hoppin' Johns for out number two. <laughs> Sam Jackson. Playing first base for the Warriors, digs in. A good piece of hitting there from Garrett West. Did about all he could do with it. But just right to the second baseman. So quickly two away for the Warriors. Sam Jackson watches that curveball miss upstairs. You can see early Reynolds has a lot of confidence in that off speed, trying to get ahead or to get back into counts. The ability to throw it. Both for a called and a swinging strike. The fastball lifted foul down the right side. It'll even the count at one apiece. Nobody on two away here in the home half of the first inning. And Sam Jackson wisely calling time as he's trying to get set in the box. Reynolds working with a whole lot of tempo. Umpire calls time and says no pitch. 1-1 one, one curveball misses low and away. Two one. There's a fastball lined into right field. It's going to be a tough play and a diving play from Munoz in right field, tailing away from Munoz down the right field line, but is able to get some leather on it and make the play for out number three. So the Warriors go down in order in the home half. We head to the top half of the second inning when we return on the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opalaka Road. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 1045. Both teams go down without a threat in the first. We head to the top half of the second inning here at John Meals Field. 
Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Jacob Goins has just begun his ESPN 106.7 on the line show from 2 to 4. Was expected to join us for game two. But we just got word here a few minutes ago, right before first pitch, right after the national anthem, that it is just going to be the one game this afternoon between Bessemer and Lee Scott. Conrad Hoppenjohns watches the first pitch breaking ball in for a called strike. The 0 1 fastball misses in the dirt. The 1-1 one, one in there on the inner half for a called strike. So Braden Butler ahead one ball and two strikes. One two curveball chopped off the plate down the third baseline foul. Wind <laughs> beginning to pick up once again. There's not necessarily a right way. I'm trying to block it with the <laughs> the headset, but we're doing our best. We apologize if it's picking up anything. The one-two curveball goes to the front door. Home plate umpire flinched. <laughs> the two-two misses downstairs, so the count runs full for the first time this afternoon. The Rebels went down unconventionally in order last time up. Elijah Evans was hit by a pitch and reached base with one out. As that full count is fouled off, was then got picked off and was thrown out at second to end the inning. So four, five, and six, Hoppin' Johns, Reynolds, and Lacey do up for the Warriors. That foul ball got a piece. Of Lane Edens, so home plate umpire will walk the ball over to Butler at the plate to allow Edens to regroup for the full count pitch. The 3 2 is swung on and lifted into left field. Alan Owen blocking the sun. With his glove and the glasses gleaming, will camp under it and make the play for out number one. Tough play as an outfielder with the the sun right in your face, and again with the wind blowing right back to where he is, right at his back. So knowing that the ball is going to die and not carry, as Alex Reynolds' first pitch swinging comes up empty. Just a really good play in left from Allen Owen. The 0-1's a curveball on the outer half for a called strike two. Butler's got that off speed working so far this afternoon. Let's see what he goes to here ahead. No balls and two strikes. Goes to it again and a swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Lane Eddins, and he's not going to fire over to first. That ball got about three quarters of the way from home plate to the third base dugout. So Alex Reynolds will reach on the drop third strike. Give Braden Butler his first strikeout of the afternoon. Unfortunately, still only one away here in the top half of the second inning. First pitch to Landon Lacey playing left field this afternoon is in there for a called strike one. Again, we talked about the ability of getting strike one on hitter. Strike one is the best pitch in baseball. It opens up numerous sequences for over to first. It's a close one, but the pinch runner dives back just in time. But again, the ability to get strike one where you can go with any sequence 
Warriors have done a really good job of that as of late. The 01 is chopped off the foot of Lacey in the right handed batter's box. So Butler ahead, no balls and two strikes. A look over at first, a long pause on the mound. Goes to the slide step and the curveball fouled straight over our heads. And we'll do it again, no balls and two strikes. Pick off over to first, and he's gonna get the runner at first without even a dive back. The pinch runner, I don't quite have his name, but he was looking down, trying to get his steps and his lead off of the first base bag, and Butler timed it up perfectly, fired over to Sam Jackson. So the second base running blunder for the Rebels. The 0-2 is lifted into shallow center field, and that's going to drop in a two-hop. Gregory in center field. So a two-out single for Landon Lacey. That'll bring up Asher Evans. But again, the second base running mistake in as many innings for the Bessemer Rebels. Braden Butler doing a really good job of mixing up his timings and his pickoff moves and good communication from his defense behind him. The first pitch to Asher Evans misses low and in. One on, two out here in the top half of the second inning. No score between the, vis the visiting Bessemer Rebels and your Lee Scott Academy Warriors. Butler gets the count even with that fastball. Mo King at third with his creeple. Begin to make his way into the infield grass. Rest of the, uh, the rest of the defense just about in their traditional set defense. A swing and a miss at the curveball. So Butler ahead, one ball and two strikes. For the mix of, of school just now letting out. A bunch of students beginning to make their way over to the field into the stands behind us, or to the right of us, I should say. A little bit of a crowd beginning to form down the left field line as well. A good crowd from Bessemer, too. So. The packed house here at John Mills Field. The one-two pitch runner is off and running, but a called third strike nonetheless, so it will not matter. So Asher Evans is retired on strikes. Braden Butler picks up his second strikeout of the contest, and we head to the home half of the second inning. Warriors looking to strike first here as we head to a break. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 104.5. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu. Or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. To the home half of the second we go. No score between the visiting Bessemer Academy Rebels and your Lee Scott Warriors. It'll be four, five, and six due up for the Warriors. Looking to strike first here in today's contest. <laughs> And the first run of the MLB season has been scored. 
If you don't consider him the greatest player of all time, he's coming for it once again this year. Mike Trout for the solo home run in the top half of the first inning for the first run and the first home run of the 2024 season. J.D. Burns digs in, watches the first pitch, breaking ball, miss in the dirt for ball one. One oh swing, that'll sneak past the glove of Evans at short. So the first hit for the Warriors comes off the bat of J.D. Burns with a leadoff single here in the home half of the second inning. Got it on the hands, just a little bit of J.D. Burns, but plays beautifully, sneaks right past the outstretched glove of Evans at short. As Jake Cummings will dig into the right-handed batter's box. Nice walk-up song gets gets the ladies in the crowd head bobbing a little bit. Again, maybe we need some more two o'clock games for the Warriors. Really big crowd showing up in support as that ball is also grounded into center field. J.D. Burns will slam on the brakes at second, but back-to-back -back singles and the Warriors are in business here. Braden Butler digs into the right-handed batter's box, looking to help himself out. Butler got to start on the mound. We'll see if he decides to square and move the runners over. He does. As that ball will roll foul. Warriors have done such a good job with the small ball so far. The ability of selfless at-bats, moving runners on. ABC Baseball when it's needed, getting them on, getting them over, getting them in. Looking to capitalize here off of back-to-back -back leadoff singles. And scratch the first run of the ball game. First baseman Hoppin' John's well into the infield grass. Butler shows once again, but pulls back. The runners caught in no man's land, able to get back just in time is J.D. Burns. So a 1-1 one -one count from Alex Reynolds to Braden Butler. Butler gets the sign from the third base coach. Is actually going to call time and trot his way over and have a meeting with the third base coach. So again, I think with how far Hoppin' Johns was into the infield grass, whether it's deciding whether or not to lay one down or deciding where. Because, again, a hard bunt back to Hoppin' Johns with his momentum working towards home play. Could fire one over to third and get the lead runner at the force. The 1-1. One -one. He does show bunt and pulls back once again as that one misses low and away. Both runners for Lee Scott getting good secondaries. If they can see the ball down, the 2-1. is a called strike on the outer half to even the count at two balls and two strikes. We'll see what Lee Scott decides to do here if they trust Butler with the bat. Or if they still try to execute the bunt with two strikes. First baseman takes a step or two back. A long look over at second, he does show, and that ball gets to the backstop and is going to go all the way back to Reynolds, who has to field it down the first baseline. It looked almost like a bunt as it bounced off the bricks. And just like that, it worked just like a bunt, but even, even where it was picked up was placed almost like a perfect bunt down the first baseline, but both Warriors will advance 90 feet. So two runners now in scoring position. And there's going to be a mound meeting. and A lot of frustration on the mound from either the pitching coach or the head coach, as I think there was supposed to be 
a pickoff call because, again, Alex Reynolds had a long pause and it almost looked like he was waiting for either the shortstop or the second baseman to make a move, but none of them did. So after all that, it'll be J.D. Burns at third, Jake Cummings at second, and Braden Butler awaits a payoff pitch. Corners will be even with their bag, but again, just a hard ground ball up the middle will score a run. Reynolds will move back to the wind up with a runner on third. Full count pitch. Is swung on and lifted. It's going to be a tough play if it stays in play. And it does not. I was blinded by the, the Warriors. The ball just fouled out of play again. I think if the wind's not blowing as hard as it is, I think it stays in play. But Braden Butler still alive. Awaits another 3-2. That one's lined into center field. A jumping grab by the center fielder will throw it in. But J.D. Burns will score on the sacrifice fly. So Braden Butler does help himself out and gives the Warriors a 1-0 lead. Just a beautiful piece of hitting from Braden Butler. And with how shallow the center fielder was playing, it just about creeped over his head. But didn't try to do too much with it. It was a low fastball. Just dropped the head on it. And it was deep enough easily to score the runner from third. So one away here as Lane Eddins watches a first pitch curveball for a called strike. Jake Cummings. Still in scoring position for the Warriors. Quick look over at second. That fastball misses upstairs. To even the count at one. One ball, one strike, one out. One nothing, your score here at John Meals Field. Lee Scott leading thanks to the sacrifice fly from Braden Butler. 1-1 one, one fastball misses off the plate. 2-1 count to Lane Eddins with the bright orange bat. Looking to see if he can increase the lead. Runner Cummings is off and going. He's going to reach safely without a throw. Alex Reynolds, Reynolds got too comfortable. Come set with look over once and then fire to the plate. And after about the second or third time, Cummings able to stake third. That ball is grounded up the middle. So another selfless at bat, beautifully done by the Warriors and Lane Eddins. And there it is again. We talk about the base running aggressiveness really paying off and the ability to stack selfless bats together. So Lane Eddins. Grounds out to short, but the Warriors will take a 2-0 lead. So now two out, nobody on. Bases cleared for Pelzer Reeves in the first pitch. Curveball hits Pelzer on the front shoulder. So Bo King will step in. And again, something that Jacob and I have talked about the entire year is the ability to get runners on and run, get runners in with two outs. Even if you can just get them on, you're forcing them to increase that pitch count, throw even more stress pitches. And if you can steal a run or two every other inning with two outs, Again, you want to talk about some percentages that you could just simply look at those stats and decide the game. First pitch swinging is Bo King and comes up empty. Pelzer's off and running on the pitch. The throw down 
will be to the third base side of second. So Reeves will slide in safely. The quarterback showing off a little bit of his wheels there. I believe the pitch was a strike on the play. So it is no balls and two strikes. And the curveball froze Bo King. So that will retire the side, but not before the Warriors strike for two in the home half of the second inning. We head to the top half of the third. Warriors leading 2 nothing. We'll be back on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Warriors strike for two in the home half of the second inning. We head to the top half of the third with the Warriors leading the Bessemer Academy Rebels two to nothing. I'm Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network, wherever you're tuned in. We thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. Again, crowd still filing in here at a beautiful John Meals Field this afternoon. Every day here in Auburn, Alabama, not a cloud in the sky. On a picture-perfect opening day in the MLB. It's the best time of year, if you ask me, and if you ask anybody, that's on that diamond right there as well. 1-0 to Casey Munoz. This is low and away. Munoz with a really nice play in right field to end the home half of the first inning and to steal a hit away. A hit, if not an extra base hit from Sam Jackson. Ball tailed away from him. Was able to make the grab. The 2 1 is swung on and missed. Butler, uh, nice job to get back in the count and even it at two balls and two strikes. 2 2. It's a fastball ripped into left field. That'll two hop. Allen Owen. So, Casey Munoz with a leadoff single here in the top half. Of the third inning, if you're the Warriors, would love to throw up a zero. Keep the momentum on your side. And again, those shutdown endings are so important. If you're, excuse me, if your offense can provide some runs and you can have a quick inning to put them back at the plate. Really, really important for the Warriors. Hudson Smith will dig in and watch the first pitch miss outside. Head coach Cook will ask for time and will make his trot over to the pitcher's mound. Again, just an absolutely beautiful day here in Auburn, Alabama. Beautiful day in general. Again, opening day in the MLB. If you're a basketball fan, the Sweet 16. Even though I don't know what basketball is anymore. After after the round of 64. 
still don't know how many dribbles I've watched, but I'm going to have to tune in to watch some games this afternoon. As again, it is just one game here at John Mills Field. We had some question marks up until game time, but it is just one. Smith will lay one down and will make the slow trot over to first. Braden Butler fields it, fires over to Sam Jackson for out number one. So that'll flip the lineup back to the top half. And Carmichael Evans and Poppy one, two, and three. One on, one out here in the home or the top half of the third inning. First pitch breaking ball misses outside. The one oh misses in the dirt. Butler. Shows a little bit of frustration with that one. Again, we talked about the Mike Trout solo home run in top or the home half of the first. No, the top half of the first. Baltimore responded with two of their own in the home half. Butler gets back in the count. The 2 1 curveball. This is upstairs, though. So three balls and one strike to Jackson Carmichael. Carmichael grounded out to Butler his first time up and to start the game. The 3-1. There's a fastball that misses on the inner half. So two on now, one out in the top half of the third inning. Casey Munoz. With a single, Hudson Smith, a sacrifice bunt, and a Jackson Carmichael walk. This is where we stand as Elijah Evans digs in. Evans was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance. Warriors with a 2-0 lead over the Bessemer Academy Rebels. Last inning, scratching those two runs across, almost exemplified the mindset of Lee Scott as a team. First pitch to Evans is a curveball. That misses outside again, going back to the home half of the second back-to-back -back singles. And then a wild pitch, both advanced 90 feet, a sacrifice fly and a ground out. Gave the Warriors the 2-0 lead. Selfless at-bats stacked together. And again, just beautiful ABC baseball to give the Warriors that crooked inning. The 1 0 is fouled off the cap of the bat. So one ball, one strike, one out. Braden Butler on the mound. Two looks over at second. That ball is lined into left field. That's going to get down. Third base umpires waving the signal and slow, slams on the brakes. As it's J.D. Burns in left. Shows off the arm. So bases are juiced for the Rebels. As two straight now have reached. Warriors looking to escape a jam. Going to get a pinch runner over at second base. An important run is that's the game tying run. Rebels so far, no runs on three hits, no errors. Two of those hits have come in this inning. As Trent Poppy batting third this afternoon digs in. He flew out to center field his first time up. First pitch swinging right into the heart of the infield. Somebody's going to have to call it. It is the third baseman, Bo King, that will make the play. Beautiful pitch from Braden Butler. As it got in on the hands 
of Poppy. Warriors would love to escape a jam here as Conrad Hoppin Johns, a tall right handed batter, digs in the old school style no batting gloves. First pitch curveball, a risky one. Backs up on Baller. Infield playing way back, giving themselves as much range as possible to keep everything in the infield. The 1 0 is swung on and missed. Even the count at one ball and one strike. One one swung on and missed again. Butler now ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes. He's gone to that fastball back to back times on the inner half. We'll see if he tries to triple up on him or if he tries to go on the off speed on the outer half. Big momentum pitch here for the Warriors. The one two swung on and lifted right to Sam Jackson at first. He'll make the grab. Right on the foul line. Beautiful job of pitching from Braden Butler in the clutch. The Bessemer Rebels strand the bases loaded here in the top half of the third. Again, we talked about those momentum pitches possibly creeping over into that third base dugout. But Warriors will keep it all on their side as we head to the third inning on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Experience is from the Rebels. Russell to its center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the Bronx. Russell to its center at Building Supply. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. To the home half of the third inning we go. It'll be one, two, three. Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson do up for the Warriors. Looking to build on that already two to nothing lead. What a beautiful job from Braden Butler in the top half to escape a bases loaded jam with one out. Getting two infield pop ups, not allowing the Bessemer Rebels to do anything in their half. And again, you want to talk about taking all of the wind out of the sails. You score two. And then give them a glimpse of hope, but shut them down. If you can scratch one or two across here in the home half of the third. First pitch swinging is Ethan Hardy. It's going to be a tough play from the third baseman. Wind playing a factor on him, and that's going to drop. And now Ethan Hardy's caught in a rundown between first and second base. The throw down to second. And the tag will be made. I think Ethan Hardy, I think he lost track of where the ball was and was just rounding first. And then realized it was dropped and was caught right to where right about where the second baseman traditionally plays and was caught in no man's land. So unfortunate there for the Warriors. I guess unfortunate on both sides, but it worked the way that it should. As the infield pop-up will lead to an out, just not conventionally. As Garrett West 
Ducks out of the way of a first pitch fastball. Garrett West with a dribbler over to second base. Carmichael will throw over to first in time for out number two. So Sam Jackson will step in with two out and nobody on here in the home half of the third inning. Sam Jackson lined out to right field his first time up. And it took a great play from Munoz in right. Otherwise, Sam Jackson might still be running. Ball was tailing away from Munoz down the first base line. And a parallel dive. Saved a double, if not a triple. 1-0 fastball misses inside, brings the count to two balls and no strikes on the Warriors' first baseman. 2-0 curveball in there for a called strike one. Both pitchers showing their confidence in their off speed, both when they're ahead of the count and behind in the count, be, being able to work back into it. A 2-1 fastball misses upstairs, so Jackson now Sitting dead red, ahead of the count, three balls and one strike. Three one. It is a curveball. The home plate umpire says misses upstairs. Alex Reynolds shows his cards a little bit with a frustration, thinking that one was over the plate for strike two. But home plate umpire sees it differently. So Jackson's award with a two out walk. So J.D. Burns digs in. Burns with a single to center field his first time up. First pitch swinging is Burns and lifts one foul down the right field line. Yeah, one from Reynolds to J.D. Burns. There's a curveball ripped once again, hops right over the second base bag. Reynolds had to dance out of the way. That one would have hit him right on the leg. But back-to-back -back base runners for the Warriors. Burns is now two for two on the afternoon. And again, it's what we talk about, the ability to get runners on and get runners over with two outs. And if you can capitalize once or twice in a game, you really, really like your chances. And again, worst case scenario, you're making that pitch count for Reynolds continue to increase with two outs. First pitch to Jake Cummings on the outer half for a called strike. A bit of a generous call there. Didn't think the, the catcher framed it too well. But got the strike call. Cummings with a single his last time up as well. Looking to do the same. In the home half of the third, the 0 1 fastball hits the top loop of the net behind us. And we'll go into the first round, the first row. Parents and fans. Cummings in a hole, no balls and two strikes. The 0 2 curveball chopped. Shortstop Evans. Will make the play for out number three and flip the ball back in frustration. I don't know if there was a bit of a collision, but threw the ball back at J.D. Burns at second. I think home play umpire, they're going to talk about it just to, to make sure everybody keeps their cool. Again, shortstop went to go make a play at second for the force out and just beat J.D. Burns, who went to a slide and I think hit his glove hand. But it doesn't look like anything more will come out of it. So we're through three here at John Meals Field. As there's still a little bit of a discussion and some frustration coming out a little bit on both sides as they're trying to, to talk to the meeting. But 
I don't think anything's going to come out of it. So we'll take a quick break before we head to the top half of the fourth inning. This is the Lee Scott Sports Network on the on Tiger Country 104.5. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Well, a little bit of a controversial ending to the home half of the third inning. Both coaches getting an, an explanation of what happened, but J.D. Burns just got called out from left field to make his way to the bench, so I don't know if he was just thrown out of the game because head coach Jared Cook was showing some frustration, and now I wonder if they're saying that, that Burns didn't slide or make an attempt to slide at second because he has been replaced in left field so we'll keep an eye on that next time we go around the batting order because again you saw Evans with the retaliation after stepping on the bag and kind of flipping the ball back to J.D. Burns and it hit him on the helmet and again so both coaches are getting an explanation and there is a new left fielder, so again, we will keep that in our back pocket until we get further further confirmation. But Warriors leading 2 nothing as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. As Alex Reynolds, the pitcher for the Rebels, digs in and is quickly in an 0-2 hole. If they're saying that Burns was was ejected for not a, not sliding at second, then I mean that's it's questionable because nothing ever came out of it. If you're if you're one of the umpires and you're making that call, then you got to make everybody aware of it. The 0-2 will run inside and hit Alex Reynolds. So leadoff runner is aboard for the second time in as many innings. And Landon Lacey, who singled in his first plate appearance, will dig into the right-handed batter's box. First pitch breaking ball misses in the left-handed batter's box. Okay, yeah, so we do have – so that, that is what it was. Burns did not slide at second base and, and ended up cleating the shortstop and and has been has been ejected from the ball game. Again, you didn't didn't see anything from, from the crowd or at least anything that, that would rise to the ejection, and the field umpire definitely didn't create a case for any chaos, but there has been – there has been confirmation of a – yeah, Burns did not slide at second and cleated the shortstop and has been thrown out of the ball game. One one swung on and missed. So Butler ahead of Lacey, one ball and two strikes.
One two fastball lifted down the left field line. The ball's going to come back in play. Don't overrun it. And a nice play there from Ethan Hardy with his back torn, turned to the infield. Able to make the play. One on one out here in the top half of the fourth inning. Warriors holding on to a 2 nothing lead over the Bessemer Academy Rebels. Throw over to first, but not in time. First pitch swinging is Asher Evans. Lifts one down, foul by the softball complex. O'King at third, even with his bag. Middle infield in, double play depth. As that ball misses outside to even the count at one. Asher Evans struck out looking his first time up to end the top half of the second inning. Warriors would love a ground ball here. Curveball. Front door curveball and a beauty for a called strike two. Started right at the front hip of Evans. Got him ducking out of the way before it broke into the strike zone. So one ball and two strikes. That curveball misses in the dirt to even the count. Short lead over at first. The 2-2 two -two swung on and fouled straight back off the net. So we'll do it again. The 2-2 two -two. is a curveball on the outer half for a called strike three. Asher Evans doesn't agree with it, but Warriors will happily take that for out number two. Braden Butler's third strikeout of the afternoon. So one on, two away. As Case of Munoz will dig in. Munoz singled to left over the head of Bo King. His first time up. Watch the first pitch curveball miss off the plate. Butler gets back even with the swing and miss fastball. Again, Butler, not somebody that's killing you with the velocity, but the movement on the pitch is definitely playing a key factor here. A reach forward as that ball is chopped to Butler at first. He will flip over to Sam Jackson in time to retire the side. Nothing doing for the best of Rebels here in the top half of the fourth inning. Warriors look to increase that lead when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Lee Scott Academy Baseball continues on Tiger Country 1045. The fourth inning is brought to you by Jeff Coat Trent. Mm -hmm. 
We head to the home half of the fourth inning. Warriors of Lee Scott with a 2-0 lead over the Bessemer Academy Rebels. My name is Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Wherever you're tuned in, we thank you for your support of Lee Scott Athletics. It'll be Braden Butler, Lane Eddins, and Pelzer Reeves due up for the Warriors. A quick look in at the only MLB game going on currently. Orioles with a 5 or five one lead, I apologize, in the home half of the second inning. Do one to Braden Butler's in there for a called strike too. So Butler behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. O2 swinging into no man's land. Going to be a tough play. Pitcher comes off the mound and rips it over the first, a little off the bag, but nice play from the first baseman to catch it and make the tag on Butler for out number one. And it is a new pitcher for the Rebels, Jackson Carmichael, who started this afternoon at second, will make his way to the mound. His first pitch swing is Lane Eddins, fouls it back. The one fastball misses downstairs, even the count at one ball and one strike. One one's a breaking ball, misses downstairs. Good take. A two one. Is lined in the right center field. That's going to get down. One hop the right fielder. Going to be a tough play and a close play at second. But nobody was at the second base back. So Lane Eddins with a one out double. The middle infield set up for a play at third. So when the cutoff was made, nobody was at second. So what was going to be a tough play ended up ending with Lane Eddins safely standing. At second base, Pelzer Reeves now digs in with the with the opportunity to increase the lead. Pelzer Reeves was hit by a pitch his first time up. First pitch swinging is Reeves. The 01 off the shin guard, and that will go into the dugout of Lee Scott. An unfortunate there for the Warriors, as it's only one base, and since the runner had not yet claimed third, only gets the third base bag. One ball, one strike, one out here in the home half of the fourth inning. Pelzer Reeves, the opportunity to make it 3 nothing. The 1-1 one -one is fouled straight back. A reminder that today's fourth inning is brought to you by Jeff Coat Trent Funeral Home and Crematory, serving Opelika, Auburn, and Lee County since 1988. Infield has come in for the Rebels. The one-two is lifted into straightaway right field. It should be deep enough. That's going to be a tough play for the right fielder. Ends up with a bobble, makes the grab. But Brandon Martin, who is pinch running for the catcher, Lane Eddins, will trot in safely. 
So Pelzer Reeves does his job beautifully, and the Warriors extend their lead to three to nothing. Again, you can't stress it enough, just the little things that Lee Scott continues to do right in all of the aspects of the game, both things that affect the scoreboard and the affect the batting average and then little things that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. All three runs for the Warriors today are on selfless at-bats. Bo King quickly in an 0-2 hole. The 0-2 curveball is spiked to the back of the net. One one or one two, fouled straight back off the net. Bo King putting together a good at bat, staying alive. If King can get on, it'll be back to the top of the order. And Ethan Hardy, one two, is a curveball, and Bo King is unable to pull the trigger. So that will retire the side. But a one out double from Lane Eddins and a sacrifice fly. From Pelzer Reeves gives the Warriors their third run of the game and lead the Bessemer Rebels three to nothing. We'll be back with the top half of the fifth inning after this one minute break on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. We're through four here at John Meals Field with the Warriors leading three to nothing over the visiting Bessemer Academy Rebels. As Braden Butler remains on the mound for the Warriors, first pitch swinging is Hudson Smith. He tries to pull it and keep it fair down the third base line, unable to do so. Bessemer, no runs on three hits, no errors. Warriors with three runs on four hits and no errors. Hudson Smith just stabs at that one. <laughs> and a Lee Scott player, instead of dancing out of the way on the soft pop-up, just let us, lets it hit him right in the shoulder and gives a wave to the crowd. <laughs> Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Wherever you're tuned in from, we thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. The 0-2 is lifted into center field, or lifted into left field, I apologize. Left fielder Alan Owen will take a few steps back, but will make the play for out number one. A 
Another big gust of wind comes by. The 1 0 to Jackson Carmichael in there to even the count at one ball and one strike. 1 1 is lined into right center field. That'll roll to the wall. Carmichael's going to have at least two. He'll throw on the brakes at second, so he'll be aboard with the one-out double. And we did see a couple arms work their way down to the bullpen. And Coach Cook will make his way to the pitcher's mound. We'll see if this is just for a meeting or if this does mark the end of the line for Braden Butler. And I believe that it will. Really nice job. Really nice quality start from Braden Butler. We'll be back here in one minute to set the scene and tell you about the new arm for the Warriors. Warriors with a 3 0 advantage over the Bessemer Academy Rebels. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Experience from the pros. Russell do it center and building supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the pros. Russell do it center and building supply. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 1045. Final line for Braden Butler. Four and one third inning pitch. Three hits, only one walk, and three Ks. Most importantly, no earned runs. Given up, and it will be Harrison Short that comes on in relief of Butler for the Warriors. One on, one out here in the top half of the fifth inning. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. First pitch from Short is off the glove of Hardy at Short. The runner, runner will be waved around, and the throw is offline. So Elijah Evans will make his way to second base. So Bessemer Academy is on the board. One of the first mistakes that we've seen from the Warriors in the field off the glove of Ethan Hardy into shallow center field. I don't think there was going to be a plate at the plate, even if there was, over through the cutoff man and allowed Elijah Evans to take the extra 90 feet. So now he's in scoring position with one away. First pitch curveball in there for a called strike. Go one is chopped over to Pelzer Reeves at second. He'll fire in the dirt, but a good pick there from Sam Jackson. We'll make the play for out number two. Reeves, I think, thought he had a little bit more time than he did and had to rush the throw just a little bit. But nice when you have a sure handed glove from Sam Jackson. Evans will make his way over to third, but two away. Here in the top half of the fifth inning, Conrad Hoppenjohns steps in over two on the afternoon, a fly out to left, and a pop out to the pitcher with the bases loaded his last time up. That curveball misses downstairs, so the count runs even. One ball and one strike. Warriors looking to dance out of trouble, only allowing the one run. Ground ball. Chopped over to Ethan Hardy. He'll have to make a quick play, and it will be in time to get Hoppin' Johns 
at first. So Bessemer does score one, but that is all as the runner stranded at third. We head to the home half of the fifth inning. Warriors hold a three to one lead. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Four Seasons Federal Credit Unions. Crossroad and Bathroom. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. And I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. Warriors surrender one in the top half of the fifth inning. Look to get it back in the home half. As it'll be one, two, three, top of the lineup, right where you want to be for the Warriors, Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson. I'm Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. First pitch to Ethan Hardy misses up and in. Still Carmichael on the mound in relief for the Rebels. Hardy shows bunt but pulls back. But the curveball in there for a called strike one. One one curveball. Ripped foul. Just past the tarp. A little delay as Bessemer player runs down to grab the foul ball. One ball and two strikes. Check swing. Peel over to first, but they say that Hardy did hold back, and I believe that he did. So the count runs even, two balls and two strikes. Two-two. Gets in on the hands of Hardy and dribbles it over to second base. Second baseman will fire over to first and Hoppin' Johns for out number one. So Garrett West will dig into the right-handed batter's box. West over two on the afternoon. It's grounded out to second in both of his plate appearances so far. Looking to reach base safely here. First pitch fastball. Misses off the plate, the 1-0. Misses downstairs. Carmichael dancing around the zone on the mound. The 2 0 is a front door curveball that stays back on the arm side. So West ahead, three balls and no strikes. Taking all the way was West. Carmichael gets back in the count. A 3-1 lined right to the shortstop in Evans. Garrett West hit it right on the screws, but right to the shortstop. So two away here in the home half of the fifth inning. West shows a little bit of frustration as he makes his way down the first baseline. So two away here in the home half of the fifth inning. Sam Jackson 0-1 on the afternoon, walked. 
his last time up. First pitch swinging at the curveball. Pop over in between first and second. Second baseman will call off the first and make the play. So Warriors go down in order in the home half of the fifth. We head to the top half of the sixth inning. There'll still be Harrison Short on the mound when we come back. Warriors holding a 3-1 to one lead on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. To the sixth inning we go here at John Meals Field. Between the Lee Scott Warriors and the Bessemer Academy Rebels. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Harrison Short remains on the mound for the Warriors. As Alex Reynolds digs into the right-handed batter's box, Reynolds started the game on the mound for the Rebels. It was 0 for 1. Struck out his first time up and then was hit by a pitch. Foul tip on the 1-0, evens the count at one ball and one strike. One one fastball. That patented two seam from Harrison Short starts off the plate, but gets the run on the outer half, brings the count to one ball and two strikes. 1-2, lifted down the right field line. Just foul off the roof of the shed. So we'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. Again, just a perfect day. 68 degrees here in Auburn, Alabama. And what should be a national holiday. Happy opening day to all those who celebrate. As the MLB season gets underway, no better way to celebrate than some Warrior baseball. One-two curveball lifted in the shallow left field. Alan Owen. But the glass is gleaming. We'll make the play for out number one. First pitch swinging is Landon Lacey. Going to be a tough play over at third. And it's going to be an out. What a play there from Braden Butler. Started the afternoon on the mound. Went back to his conventional ways at third and a little swinging bunt. And the throw down to first. And great footwork as well from Sam Jackson. The ball was on the inner half in foul territory. The ability to adjust it. Still keep his foot on the back for out number two. Again, there's that plus defense that Coach Cook talks about and prides himself on. The 0-1 swung on and missed. The 
802, there's that slider. Sweeps right through the strike zone. This one misses just off the plate. The one-two count. Goes back to the slider. Called a ball once again. So deuces wild on the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top half of the sixth inning. Warriors with a three-to-one lead. The 2-2 from Short to Evans is ripped right up the middle. I think it nutmegged Harrison Short on the way by as well. So Asher Evans is aboard for the first time with a two-out single. As Kesa Munoz digs in. Munoz one for two on the afternoon. Singled to left and grounded out to the pitcher his last time up. First pitch is a called strike on the outer half. Again, that fastball in the outer half to righty, such a such a pretty pitch from Harrison Short, and then goes to that slider and gets Munoz dancing out of the way. For the call, it's strike two. So short in command. Ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Evans with a short lead over as that ball is dribbled down the first baseline. Will dance on the line and is picked up by Sam Jackson. He will step on first for out number three. So that'll retire the side in the top half of the sixth inning. Warriors looking to get some insurance before we head to the top half. Of the seventh inning, Warriors in control, leading 3-1 to one on the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank & Trust. Member FDIC. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. It'll be Alan Owen, Jake Cummings, and Braden Butler due up for the Warriors in the home half of the sixth inning. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. As the Warriors have a 3-1 lead, looking to increase it and grab some insurance. Before they try and ice it in the top half of the seventh, Alan Owen will step to the plate in his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Reminder, he came in and replaced J.D. Burns, who, after some controversy and after a, a long discussion, was ejected for not making a slide attempt at second and cleating the shortstop. Owen first pitch swinging. I think it hit him in the foot in the box. And if there's a foul, if there's a foul ball call, I mean the home plate umpire has to take take charge and call it immediately. There shouldn't be there shouldn't be any sort of any sort of any sort of conversation. It is going to be a foul ball, which is is the correct call. Again, I mean it hit it hit Owen in the foot. You can see by the way it spun down the third base line.
New pitcher for the Rebels, Clint Ritchie. A tall right-hander. Owen oh, rips the ball past the third baseman into left field. So Alan Owen is aboard in his first plate appearance with a single. Owen will get a pinch runner. It'll be Brandon Martin. Again, Warriors adding some speed on the bases as every insurance run heading to the top of the seventh will be crucial. Would love to tack on one here in the home half of the sixth inning, leading three to one so far. Bessemer with one run on six hits. Warriors with three runs on five hits. And again, it's been the selflessness of Lee Scott in their plate appearances. All three runs have scored via the selfless at bat. Two sacrifice flies. As coming shows bunt. And Brandon Martin. Will steal second. Again, apologies. I was looking down trying to find two sacrifice flies and a ground out to short of giving the Warriors those three runs. Cummings again was showing bunt. Pulled back wisely just enough to keep the catcher in his crouch. And Brandon Martin's able to steal second and get in scoring position with nobody out here in the home half of the sixth inning. We'll see if they try and square again, and he does. And it's a curveball that misses inside. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Showing bunt there. First baseman, Hoppin' Johns, already two or three steps into the infield grass. Third baseman, preparing himself for a possible close play. Brandon Martin's off and running and will steal third easily. Just a beautiful read and a beautiful jump. Clint Ritchie pausing and with the one look and then would fire to the plate. Brandon Martin got a two-step, I mean, almost a, a two-shuffle lead. Got a full head of steam going to third base and steals it easy. So the infield will come in to try and prevent this fourth run from scoring. So now if you're Cummings, your mentality has completely flipped from trying to lay down a bunt to try and get anything elevated that you can put into the outfield grass. The 2-1 from Richie to Cummings is in the dirt. And apologies, wind picking up here at John Mills Field. A little bit trees beyond the outfield wall blowing. And an indecisive swing from Cummings is fouled off the back net. And the count will run full. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on, or nobody out. Brandon Martin stands at third for the Warriors. The 3-2 pitch is lifted down the right field line. That will hit the hitting facility. So we'll do the payoff pitch once again. The 3-2 is lined into shallow center field, but again, the slice on the ball, that'll drop. Brandon Martin will score without a throw, so Jake Cummings does his job beautifully. Got in on the hands a little bit, but just a beautiful piece of hitting. Muscled it out into right center field. So the Warriors now lead 4-1 to one here in the home half of the sixth inning. And again, the small ball. And what we talked about is that ball gets past the first baseman on the pickoff attempt. Cummings going to be waved around second. He's going to reach third. It's a little closer play than I thought that it was going to be, but he does slide into third safely. 
And again, there it is again. We talk about it. I talked about it in the open. The small ball, the aggressive base running, almost working as the special team side in football. And how there's such momentum plays, not necessarily what you're going to see in the stat column, but just doing the little things right, getting a leadoff single, two stolen bases, another single scores him. And now just like that, Warriors with another runner on third. First pitch to Brandon Martin. It's a curveball dropped in for a called strike. Warriors leading 4-1 to one in the home half of the sixth inning. We were only asking for one. Now we're getting greedy asking for two. Third ball misses up and in. It's even the count at one ball and one strike. The ball lifted into straightaway left field. Left fielder Lacey will catch it and fire and make the play over at home and will not. As Cummings did not come to a slide, but home plate umpire right on it will give the safe call and I think the home co home head coach for Bessemer is going to come up and ask if Cummings had to slide but you're required to slide if the catcher's in the in the baseline again the throw brought the catcher back beyond the right or basically behind the right-handed batter's box and Cummings on the inside of home will step on it so give Braden Butler his second sacrifice fly of the afternoon Warriors now lead five to one over the visiting Rebels First pitch to Lane Eddins in the dirt for ball one. Lane Eddins one for two on the afternoon. Ripped a double. Into the right center gap his last time up. Takes the fastball upstairs. A 2 0. Fouled right off the, the mask of Smith. The 2 1 from Richie to Lane Eddins. There's a curveball that misses downstairs, so Eddins ahead in the count. Three balls and one strike. Warriors led 3-1, heading to the home half of the six. We're looking for insurance. Already have two. The 3-1 is fouled straight back over the net behind home plate. Three balls, two strikes, one out for Lane Eddins. Three two pitch will miss. Low and away, so Lane Eddins will reach with the one out walk. Braden Martin will be the pinch runner. As it looks like there's going to be a pitching change for the Rebels. We'll step aside for just a moment. We'll come back and talk about the new pitcher and talk about the inning that we've seen from the Lee Scott Warriors. The Warriors leading 5-1 to one here in the home half of the sixth. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, 
for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott Baseball Station is Tiger Country 1045. Warriors with a two spot here in the home half of the six. They were looking for insur insurance and they have gotten it, but are still not done. Is only one away in the home half of the six. The new arm on the mound for the Rebels. I believe it's number 20, John Weston Beams. Trying to get the clear number. It's either Beams or it's 21 and Landon Lacey. We'll see here in just a moment when he makes his way back to the mound. It is 21. So it is Landon Lacey who comes in for relief. This is the fourth pitcher for the Rebels. Lacey started his day in left field. One away, one on here in the home half of the sixth inning. Again, Braden Martin pinch ran or pinch running for Lane Edens, who drew a walk. As Pelzer Reeves watches the first pitch strike. Five to one, your score in the home half of the sixth inning. Good guys out in front. Pelzer Reeves lifts the 0-1 fastball into shallow center field. Shortstop Evans will call off the center fielder and make the play for out number two. Harrison Short will make his way to the plate. To make his first at bat of the afternoon. Short has come in. The relief of Braden Butler. Butler again went four and a third, four hits, only allowed one walk, three strikeouts, and no earned runs. Actually scratched that. He, he was responsible for the runner at second base, so did. Did have the one earned run, but Warriors definitely in control here. Shake off from Lacey on the mound. Martin is off and running and will reach with a slide. So tally another stolen base for Braden Martin and yet another runner in scoring position for the Warriors. Again, we, we asked for one, got greedy, asked for two. Can we get even more greedy and ask for three? 1-1 one, one fastball is in for a called strike. A catcher didn't sell the strike very well, but still got the call. One ball and two strikes. Lacey will get assigned one look. A defensive swing from short, but will stay alive. We'll do the one two once again. The one two. Martin's off and running the dribbler over to short. Evans will make the play and throw over to first in time for out. Number three, again, we asked for some insurance. We asked for one, ended up getting two. Warriors with a 5-1 advantage. We head to the top half of the seventh inning. Warriors three outs away from their seventh straight victory. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 104.5. 
What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 104.5. To the seventh inning we go, Warriors, three outs away from winning their seventh straight contest. Harrison Short remains on the mound for the Warriors. It'll be Hudson Smith and then back to the top in Carmichael and Evans. So not out of the woods quite yet, but the home half of the sixth. You love the insurance that this Warrior team was able to scratch across and again, just doing it with completely selfless at bats. Three sacrifice flies in the game for the Warriors. Jade Cummings also with an RBI single in the home half of the sixth. First pitch from short is fouled off the right side. The 01 backs up on short. Smith dances out of the way and then hangs his head as the entire dugout screams to wear it. The 1-1 one, one. gets it on the hands of Smith and it's a dribbler to Harrison Short. He will pick it up and fire over to Sam Jackson at first for out number one. One away here in the top half of the seventh inning. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. First pitch to Jackson Carmichael is a slider in there for a called strike. Carmichael one for one for two on the afternoon. He doubled to right center his last time up. I know one fastball gets in on the hands. And it's fouled off Carmichael in the box. So short ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. The 0-2. Fastball misses in the left-handed batter's box. Short tried to go to that. You don't usually hear it too often, but a backdoor two seam, I think, is what you could officially call it. One, two, slider just off the plate, evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Had Lane Eddins standing up in the crouch, ready to fire down the third. But called a ball, the two, two is swung on and missed that time. So Short picks up his first strikeout of the afternoon. No, oh, second strikeout of the afternoon, I apologize. The Warriors, one out away here. At John Meals Field from taking down the Bessemer Rebels. First pitch swinging is Elijah Evans. And apologize about the win. Once again, doing my best to cover the microphone.
Pop straight back behind us. Foul, so short now ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. Warriors one out away. The 0-2. It's a fastball on the outer half for a called strike three. And that will do it. Warriors are victorious for the seventh straight contest. Again, just an all-around dominant performance on all four aspects of the game. We talked about it in the open. Hitting, coming to life on the mound. Just showing the dominance, getting ahead. Early in the count, defense had some web gems, able to get out of some jams, and the special teams, really the thing that you would highlight with the small ball, with, with the taking the extra base and the selfless hitting, really the highlight in today's contest. Warriors with their seventh straight game, and again, the total now outscoring their opponents 56 to seven in those seven games, only allowing one run per contest. And just, I mean, again, a pure display of all around baseball warriors clicking at the right time and have proven it again here today at John Meals Field. We'll be back in just a moment with the Orthopedic Clinic post game show. You're listening to Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Gooch Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience and knowledge from the pros. Russell Buick Center and Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience and knowledge from the pros. Russell Buick Center and Building Supply. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Let's get back to the game. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5.
Warriors are victorious 5-1 to one over the visiting Bessemer Academy Rebels. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. As the little ones are running the paces here at John Meals Field. Some of the parents on the field with their, with their cameras recording as some of the players are getting to race. The varsity players are a really cool sight to see. You know, those, those kids see the varsity players as professionals and all smiles here at John Meals Field. As we welcome you into the Orthopedic Clinic post game show, we'll try and get head coach Cook, and we're going to try and get a player on here as well. For the Orthopedic Clinic post game show, East Alabama's go to center for orthopedic care with locations in Auburn and Opelika to better serve you. You can find them on the web at theorthoclinic.com. Another all around, just high quality performance by the Lee Scott Warriors in all four aspects of the game. We talked about it in the open of, of how you can split these games into four separate categories. When you look at it on the offensive side, the defensive side, the pitching, and then again, the base running and the small ball. And that was the thing. If you can win two or three of those four categories, you really like your chances in a baseball game. I think if you're the Warriors today, you want all four of them. But the one that sticks out the most is that small ball, the base running, again, the special teams aspect that you can call it. Not necessarily the sexiest, not necessarily the things that you you look at in the stat sheet, but again, just the ability to get runners on, to move them over, and to get them in. It's just, I mean, it's the name of the game. It is ABC Baseball. That's not necessarily the the three-run jacks or you know, or the, the six straight hits. But again, in games like this, that with, with high-quality pitching on both sides, every single run that you can scratch across is even more important as the next one. And the Warriors able to scratch three across in the first six innings and then the closer to be able to, to, be able to go out and scratch two across, again, just the old-fashioned way in the home half of the six to extend the insurance on the mound. Here we go. We finally... So we welcome Braden Butler to the Orthopedic Post Game Show. You can hear me, right? We're yes, good sir. with everything. Yes, Perfect. Sir. Talk about, you know, your confidence on the mound again, the defense behind you, the defense that you even displayed when you were off the mound, but how good does that feel? It's something that we've highlighted. It's something that Coach Cook has highlighted throughout the games as well. The plus defense, what does that speak to the confidence of your ability to just get ahead and throw strikes? That feels great. It lets me, allows me to just go up there, do my thing, throw in the zone, and be able to trust my defense behind me. Definitely, yeah, going four and one-third, only allowing four hits, one walk, three Ks, and only one run. Just an all-around performance, being able to get the guy. Uh, I know a doubleheader was initially scheduled. Was there any sort of mindset, or were you going game one regardless? No, sir. I appreciate sure I was going game one regardless, but I'm ready for anything. Gotcha. Yeah, just whenever whenever the name is called. And I feel like that's kind of how this whole team is is wired. Again, it's not necessarily going to beat you with, with the long ball or anything like that, but just being able to rely on guys yes, day in and day out. And speaking to your day at the plate as well, two sacrifice flies, being able to help yourself out, definitely a confidence boost. Talk about what you're seeing at the plate and how your mentality changes when you get runners in scoring position, how it changes from, you know, being able to get on base to just kind of simply doing your job. Yes, sir. You know, for me, it's almost easier for people on base because then it makes my job easy. I got to do is hit something hard, you know, drive them in and that's kind of my mindset all the way around. Definitely. Well, it definitely worked out today. Yes, sir. Braden, we appreciate you yes, sir. for being on here. Continue the hot hitting and the hot pitching on the mound. That's Braden Butler, the starting pitcher that gets the win for the Warriors today, this afternoon. We'll pass the microphone yes, sir. down to head coach Jared Cook. But Braden, just a really good job. Again, going four and a third, four hits, only one walk, three Ks, and also had two sacrifice flies to help himself out and give those Warriors the lead as we welcome head coach Jared Cook to the Orthopedic Clinic post game show. Coach Cook, again, we talked about it a couple nights ago. Things just seem to be rolling. The confidence on the team at an all time high. What did you see from your guys today? Yeah, I mean, I saw good stuff uh, from Braden. Uh, to start us off and and really just a good team win man these guys are buying in uh you know we're doing some good things on the bases we're understanding 
you know, how we need to manufacture runs. And it's just a, it's a run here. It may not seem like a big inning all the time, but it's a run here, a run there. And our pitching's given us a chance to win. We're playing clean defense. And, you know, that's about all I can ask for. We, we were really good with two strikes today. We were. We yep. were really good with two strike counts. And guys are starting to settle in and get comfortable with that. Uh, so I was just pleased to see a lot of balls hit back up the middle with our approaches today. And, um, you know, I just – I could be more proud. You talk about it, only three strikeouts today as a team. Definitely seeing beach balls up at the plate. I was talking about it in the open today about if you can win two or three of the four aspects, that being at the plate, on the mound, the defense, and and the small ball. Today I feel like, quote, unquote, the special teams of yeah. baseball. I was comparing it to – to football how it's not necessarily the sexiest way to get things done but just being able to manufacture runs playing abc baseball doing your job and that was a question that i asked Braden butler of how you know you get guys on it's not necessarily me time it's just the ability to either move them over or to get them in he says it's easier talk to me about the mindset change that you've seen and how you talk about being able to manufacture those runs in tight games where you see talent on the mount yeah i mean i think confidence is everything but i also think just being unselfish you know just it's it's not me, it's we, and, you know, guys have, I think they've seen the fruits of their labor, right? I, I mean, I really feel like, you know, we put some, some good games together. You know, I thought we we faced some quality arms today and and, and uh, had some good at-bats. And, and, again, you know, it was, I mean, it was weak contact all over the field, you know, with Braden and his stuff and then Harrison coming in and, and just doing what he does, yeah. you know, just coming in on the back end and, I was a little concerned because he's thrown three days, you know, I think three games out of the last four or five days, but he just got a rubber arm. And, you know, he's efficient. I mean, uh, he's really efficient for us. So, uh, you know, guys are playing with a lot of confidence. It, it makes my job easy. It definitely does. And I was talking about you said the, the we over me mindset. Braden hinted at that here a little bit when I was talking about his selfless at-bats. Two sacrifice flies for him on the day and how he said that, Whenever my name is called, I'm ready. He didn't know if he was going to be the starter today as we were expecting the doubleheader, but you could see his mindset never shifted. He said, as soon as I'm ready, uh, that when my name is called, I'm ready to step up. And I feel like that's that's the mindset of this team. And that's the mindset that you have to have again, not necessarily with the long ball, but the, abil the ability to scratch across runs and claw and just out scrap opponents. And that's what we've done. I get seven straight now. Outscoring those opponents 56 to 7 in those six games. And I think that just speaks to the all around performance. And again, it goes back to the confidence level that we were talking about. Coach, we appreciate your time as always here on the Orthopedic Clinic post game show. We'll take a two quick two minute break as we wrap things up here at John Meals Field. Warriors victorious 5 to 1 over the Bessemer Academy Rebels. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opalaka Road. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. Warriors are victorious over the Bessemer Academy Rebels, 5-1 to one in their route of seven straight wins over opponents. Just finished up interviewing Braden Butler and head coach Jared Cook. Always love being able to hear what they have to say, the mentality of the game, and the mentality of the players. And I think it's just clear what Coach Cook has, has implemented in this first year at Lee Scott. And it's just a, it, it is a hard nose. It's a blue collar mindset of, again, we're not going to sit here and, and hit the long balls every single inning, but we're going to scratch together runs and we're not going to be phased when the tough time comes because we know how to induce and how to 
how to attack the pressure. And again, today was a, a really good example of that. Only had six hits in the contest, but had five runs. And it all came to the selflessness, the we over me mentality that Coach Cook was talking about. Three sacrifice flies, a ground out to short with a runner on third, and then a single off the bat of Jake Cummings to give the Warriors the five nothing lead. Our next broadcast on the Lee Scott Sports Network will be this Saturday as a doubleheader against Lakeside at 11 a.m. First, first pitch set for 11 a.m. Jacob and I will be live at 10.45 a.m. right here on your home for classic country hits, Tiger Country, 104.5, tigercountry.net, and the Tiger Country 104.5 app. Thank you again for listening to Lee Scott Academy Baseball on the home of the Warriors, Tiger Country 104.5. Warriors victorious for their seventh straight time in as many contests, defeating the Bessemer Rebels 5 to one for Christian or for my for my broadcast partner Jacob Goins at the Auburn Network Studio. I'm Christian Griffin. Until next time, until Saturday, actually, stay safe. Happy opening day once again to all those who celebrate. Go watch some baseball. Go watch some basketball. And until Saturday morning, go Warriors. Lee Scott Academy Baseball has been presented by.